Hello everyone, with me today is a very special, different kind of stinger, and you are watching OGT. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, it really helps us on the channel, especially in lieu of all the issues going on uh, with the social media platforms. If you're interested in the Killer Bee Connecticut or many others from Blackworks Studio and Black Label Trading Company, check us out at OGT, you know where to find us. I'm going to do a review today of a uh, blend that really impressed me at the PCA Trade Show. So for those who don't know, the PCA Trade Show, they meet once a year. It's for everyone in the industry, retailers, manufacturers, media, a whole bunch of different aspects meet at Vegas for the trade show to see new products being released uh, as well as original products and deals and such like that. One of them was the Killer Bee. So this is a Ecuadorian Connecticut using a twist and a cap of an Ecuadorian Maduro. If you have enjoyed Black Works or Black Label Trading, you do know that they like to use, James Brown uses Ecuadorian Maduro quite a bit in his blends. That's no exception for the Killer Bee Connecticut. Even though it is wrapped in a beautiful Connecticut uh, leaf, it has a Maduro cap and a twist at the top. What does this add to the blend? Does it do anything? It's time to find that out. So I was able to try this at PCA, and now I'm going to do a review to see exactly how it holds up now that it's here available at Oakland Tobacconist. All right, so first to do, we're going to do a cut and a dry draw. There we go. Definite earth, like right off the bat. There's earthiness to this. I'm not going to say pepper, but there's a little bit of like something sharp, like a tingling on the uh, lips for sure. Now, this is closed foot, so I am not going to toast it up. I'm going to go immediately to lighting. So this is interesting because for the most part, I'm holding Connecticut uh, stick. However, this is full Maduro flavor at the front. And that's what I believe because of the uh, closed uh, foot. And then of course, as we burn down that Maduro, it's gonna get closer. We'll see if there's a flavor change. Is it just gimmicky or is it actually gonna happen? The twist of Maduro, I think that's where I'm getting the tingling on the lips, uh, but so far no bitterness, mo more sweet than anything. Retro is, is very creamy, very light. There's no burst of pepper. Um, but still that Maduro flavor. So almost if you were to have a Maduro that was like not in your face, not strong, those kind of like mediums. And even though a lot of people in the American market associate a uh, Maduro with strength, because that's kind of the way it's been like engineered. Uh, however, when Maduro's originally started, they were not necessarily so strong, but they were more sweet. Maduro means mature or ripe as it were. And so it doesn't mean strength or punch. Uh, but we're burning this down. I'm going to continue to see where we are. Let's see where this lands as we get into the Connecticut side. Man, this is just, it's very creme brulee-esque, but it's got an espresso note, and I think that's the Maduro. So there's like that creaminess up front um, with that espresso kind of sprinkled on the top, a little bit of cocoa powder, a little bit of like white pepper, slightly in the back of the throat, but not forward and not on the retro. Um, but here we go, we're transitioning into the Connecticut now. And there's that, that sort of like dissipation of Maduro strength into a creamy creme brulee-esque type of sweetness. This is a translation I really love. And a lot of times you wonder, is this gimmick, is it not? Um, but this is a transition that really earns its place. Similar to the Green Hornet, where you have that candela creamy grass hay cap that then moves into this Maduro chocolate force. This is actually reverse. It's like if you finished a hearty dessert and you're moving to the lighter side, this is definitely something I need to try with a cup of coffee. but sweet, light, creamy, peppers dying off, really enjoyable. That's the beginning uh, third of this Petite Corona. I'm gonna continue and we will see where we land in the second third. 
So here we are, second, third. And you can see the evidence right there. I put the cigar down, I moved, bumped the table, and the ash fell. So it was holding up, but unfortunately when it hits the ground, there's no, there's no way it's going to hold on. Flavor-wise, definitely more of that creme brulee creaminess. Sweetness, no pepper. Um, I absolutely love this transition. And I've always been a huge fan of the porcelain by Black Label Trading. Continue to be so. But this is definitely giving a run for its money. The can, it, I would say one of the biggest deterrents from maybe this cigar is its size. It's a 4.5 by 46 Petite Corona. So when people see that size, they're always wondering, like, is it a long enough cigar, long enough smoke? It is putting out insanely good flavor and burning pretty slow. And as I had mentioned, I want to try it with coffee, so I had to get some coffee as well, and I want to see what I can get flavor-wise different with that paired. So like I said, more creamy, sweet, a little bit of hay, maybe an alfalfa, but really good flavor. Let's see how the cup of coffee changes things up. And I went with straight black coffee. It's the, way, it's the only way to drink it. Definitely more grounded, deeper flavor. Gives it more of like a hearty like type of uh, taste to it, a hearty type of like smoke output. But pairs really well. It adds a little more sweetness to the coffee, I feel like, and then the coffee adds a little more depth to the Connecticut. So I'm going to continue to smoke on this. If you haven't known, the feature lineup for this video is two of these Connecticut's, two of the original Killer Bee, two of the Green Hornet with a Candela foot, and then a Royalty Black, all of which is in our seven singer sampler. You can find the link for it on our Instagram channel. Hunt it down. It's a fantastic lineup featured for this video. Okay, here we are. Final third. Just about to take the band off. Starting to get there. Uh, really good flavor. It's ramping up a little bit in strength, which is really nice. It's not like fizzling out, but that creaminess, that sweetness is is all the way through. It's medium plus in body where it really encompasses your whole palate, but strength-wise, mild. Edging to medium, but not too much. But I really enjoy that force of Maduro on the twist and on the cap because it just furthers that transition. And if there's something I really enjoy, it's complexity of different flavors and complexity of transitions. Killer Bee is a fantastic petite Corona. If you're a fan of this size or really haven't tried this size, I would definitely recommend it. You can kind of see the differences between a bigger Vitola, bigger ring gauge, and something like this. Fantastic blend. James Brown, once again, has done an amazing job, and it's a fantastic coffee pairing cigar. Once again, check out our featured lineup, and as always, thank you for all the support and enjoying uh, a stick with us here on OGT. I am Eric. We'll see you next time. Bye -bye.